Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Meats and Beats with your host, Tony and AJ. Well, we made it. <laughs> yeah, apparently so. Here we are. Episode two. Honestly, uh, I really kind of thought that we were going to just do one and then just say screw it and not do it because like only our moms listen to the first one or something, but apparently some people listen to it. Yeah, yeah, apparently some people did. We actually got our first Patreon supporter and everything. Oh, yeah, shout out Michael Thomas out in OKC. He was our first Patreon, and if you want to get on that and get you a shout out, we got a bunch of tiers on our Patreon page. Just go to our website, meetsandbeatspodcast.com. All the information's there. We got a bunch of merch now because we're official. And yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. if you want to help us do cool shit that's random and crazy and out there like we are, then, you know, give it a shot. I think uh, the greatest comment that I saw from the first podcast was a drinking game that uh, my buddy Seth made up. And he said, every time you dropped an F-bomb, he was going to take a sip. Every time I said the word bro, he was going to take two sips. And if I said the word dude, it was going to be three sips. Man, I wish I knew if, that he was playing this game right now because I would fucking drown him in alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Oh, man. All right. Well, uh, I guess here we are, episode two. And uh, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to jump right into really the coup de gras of, of meats. We're going to talk about steak and the cooking methods for cooking steak. You know, there's a lot of things out there and... We're going to kind of go through the whole ringer on it. Um, do you want to just start at the bottom and work our way to the top of like least favorite to favorite? Or how did you have him? What did you have in mind? You know, I didn't really have a have a hierarchy of okay, methods. Okay, good. Because I'm ready to roast my worst least favorite method of cooking a steak. All right. Let's go. Let's, let's go with it. What do you got? George Foreman Grill. George Foreman Grill. Other than the fact that he made billions and billions of dollars, who probably millions of, I can't back this up with facts. It's probably the worst possible way to cook a steak because it doesn't get hot enough, and like there's no fire, which is one of my number one requirements for cooking a steak. So but there's yeah. lines, there's grill lines, right? So that makes it legit. I mean, basically like fool's gold of grilling. I mean, you're ruining the college lives of people everywhere. Bro, I had, I've had i gone through a solid at least 14 George Foreman grills in my illustrious college to now career. And I think the best one that I ever had was this one that kind of looked like a pit. And it had like a stand and everything. And it has a dome. And like, I mean, I'll do some fajitas on there if I have to. But yeah, no. George Foreman is my least favorite. Uh, next to that is the flat top grill. Well, you know, if you're going to cook inside, I mean, to me, if you're going to cook inside, you got to go with the cast iron. I mean, that's that's really got to be what you're going to do. If you're going to cook it inside, you know, you can get the butter going and get a real nice crisp to it on the exterior. And if you cook it right, you can do pretty pretty damn well with cast iron. Are you doing the butter based with the thyme and the rosemary, or what do you do? And garlic? Mm, no, I don't use thyme and rosemary on beef. Never, I don't know. I watch never, too many sir. YouTube videos. Apparently, you watch too many <laughs> YouTube videos. That's what they all do, and it's all in slow motion yeah. and sexy looking. If you put thyme on my steak, I'm going to slap you with my <laughs> big, giant baseball glove hand. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That escalated so quickly in episode two. <laughs> so what I do with the cast iron is I actually just use salt, pepper, and whatever seasoning I'm using at the time. Uh, lately, I've been on some Uncle Chris's and Chupacabra, kind of a mix of those two. Um, and then sometimes I'll throw a little Worcestershire on there, Worcestershire, however you pronounce it. Worcestershire. There's, I think a viral Facebook thing about saying that into your phone or something right now. But um, <laughs> Put it all on there and make sure you got plenty of butter. Sear it real good on each side. And if, it, <clears throat> if you have a good amount of butter, you can actually kind of splash it back over to get the to get a good crispness on the fat. It's really nice. I like it. I like it a lot. So are you doing just the cast iron on the stovetop or do you put it in the oven to like finish it and cook it all the way through? I didn't know that. Do people do that? I don't, Dude, I don't I, do that. I stay on the Tasty Kitchen website and they're... <laughs> youtube so i don't know i've never i've done cast iron like a couple of times it's, it's like my third least 
or whatever third worst favorite of cooking. So the only time I ever put a cast iron pan in the oven is to bake biscuits. You know, sometimes I'll use a cast iron pan to bake a pan of biscuits or something or cornbread. Cornbread's good in the cast iron in the oven. It's Dude, cor- cornbread on the side of a steak? No, not with steak. I'm oh, just no. saying a kind of tangent as as I like to do <laughs> into uses Captain for tangent. <laughs> into uses for for the cast iron, but no, if I'm cooking a steak on a cast iron, it's on the stovetop, cook it till it's done and then eat it. Yeah. Um, you cut me off a while ago when I was talking uh, trash about the flat top griddle. Oh, yeah. I didn't get to go on well, a rant well, on I mean, that. How many people have a flat top griddle in their house? I mean, I mean maybe I'm just poor, but I don't have a flat top <laughs> griddle in my house. My bad. I thought we were going to just be free to roast everything that we could. But, I mean, clearly there are rules here, and I didn't yes, see the... Yeah, if, if I'm ever at Waffle House and I see a guy order uh, steak and eggs for breakfast, yes. and that steak is cooked on the flat top, Stop I kind of cringe. Yeah, uh, I got one... And uh, we stopped at this place in San Diego. I went to California, I don't know, some time ago in July. And we got to the place, and usually I can scope it out and kind of like make an assessment based on the atmosphere of the place if they have at least like a gas grill in their kitchen or if it's going to be straight flat top. And this place was like honestly stepping back in time into like, I don't know, the 70s or the 80s into this ridiculous like very dark, very movie-esque diner. Was it on Route 66? No, it uh, was on... A lot cooler uh, if it was. I actually did go to a <laughs> diner on Route 66 in New Mexico, and I got a chicken fried steak and eggs, and it was the best chicken fried steak that I've ever had in my life, not in Texas. Oh, that's strong. That's, yeah. that's definitely noteworthy. Yeah, I almost didn't order it, because I'm like, dude, what do people in New Mexico know about chicken fried steak? But they apparently know quite a bit. Nice. It was definitely, de- yeah, for sure, like top five that I've ever had. And the uh, best one not in Texas. But anyway, yeah, so this place in San Diego, I was like, dude, I was like, they had a New York strip and eggs on the menu. And this place was hopping at like 1030 on a Friday. And I'm like, do these people even have jobs? Or like, what's the case? Because it was like a 45 minute wait on a Friday morning. So anyway, I'm like, okay, let me go ahead and just swing for the fence and get this New York strip and eggs. Sure enough, they brought it out. It was flat top cooked. Oh, disappointing. disappointing. So disappointing. Anyway, that's enough about the bad stuff. Let's move on. I think my third most favorite or whatever, I don't know where I'm at. One of my favorite ways to cook is a reverse sear, but instead of probably what you're thinking about on a reverse sear, I like to do mine in a smoker. And by smoker, of course, I mean a Traeger. Oh, Traeger steak. Back on it. Is that a thing? Traeger steak? It's definitely a hashtag that I'm going to start using. Hey, I yeah. mean, that's, that's probably start something viral there. I'm going to put it on a t-shirt. <laughs> that's Traeger my new thing. I'm t-shirt. putting everything on a t-shirt. Yeah, so I get my, you have to do it with like a thick steak is what I've uh, what I've found out. And usually, well, Generally, like, any reverse sear is best done with a thick steak. I mean, yeah. part of what we talked about at the beginning is... You know, when you're looking at methods of cooking steak, you really got to look at what kind of steak you have. What What's the cut? What's the size? I mean, a lot of those factors come into play when you're deciding how to cook it. So if you go to reverse sear a little quarter inch piece of steak, Get you're going to have a bad time. Yeah. I don't need, if anybody has a quarter inch piece of steak, go feed it to your dog right now. You know, don't <laughs> even feed it to your dog. Just put it in your garbage disposal. Uh, actually, slice it up and make a Philly cheesesteak sandwich. Don't even do that. Because you should start with a thicker steak, right? I don't know, dude. I live in Texas. Does it look like Philadelphia? I mean, I know some people in Philly. Oh, well, shout out to y'all in Philly. I've never met. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, thick, thicker is always better for me. Uh, at least two inches thick. <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so I put it in my um, I put it in my Traeger <laughs> at like 200 and... Uh, <laughs> all right. It's just a steak, bro. 225 or so 220 to 25 and I just smoke it and it's usually like about an hour and uh, I use the Texas blend which is mesquite oak and pecan not pecan 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 yeah and uh when yeah I hear so pecan it it hurts my soul yeah this is Texas not uh pecan pie anywhere Get else out of here. yeah this ain't the south 
We aren't the South. We're Texas. Anyway, Captain Tangent. <laughs> anyway, so smoke it for like an hour or so uh, until it hits the internal temperature of like, I don't know, 120 something degrees. All of this stuff you can see on a video shameless plug that I put on my YouTube channel in the kitchen with AJ. Solid video channel. I think that video just got a million views. Man. So, yeah, That's thank you. It's definitely a hallmark achievement, bro. Yeah, I mean, clearly I have made it in life. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's and then to uh, warrant starting a podcast. That was, that, was the, uh, that was the catalyst, and I was like, dude, I'm already multi-famous on different platforms. What else can I conquer in life? Exactly. Clearly <laughs> just the greatest person ever in life. And uh, <laughs> you know how I know that? Because somebody created a fake Facebook profile and Tinder profile of me today oh, and yesterday. That's when. That's really a hallmark of, like, minor fame. Yeah. Like, why didn't they use someone that was good looking? Right. You know, like, <laughs> if you're gonna catfish, climb the ladder. Yeah. You know? Right. Don't like go down. <laughs> like, maybe okay. Maybe it was like an even fatter, uglier dude, and like he's like, oh man, that guy's like believable that I could catfish as him because it's not like a good looking guy with a six pack because that's suspect. I mean, like, so like whoever he reels in, like. Maybe there's a shot. Like, maybe there's a like she's gonna see awful. him and be like, "Oh, well, you're only a little bit fatter than your picture." Maybe the picture was like four years old. Possibly so. <laughs> anyway, so, so my Traeger, yeah, hundred two hundred twenty five degrees, smoke it for like an hour, then hit it on scorched earth coals, and then it's like probably one of my favorite ways of cooking the steak. Reverse sear is definitely legit, and you gotta have the right cut for it. You gotta have the time to do it. You know, it's a very time consuming method. And having the thermometer helps, you know. I tend to, when I cook, I tend to eyeball and guesstimate just about everything that I cook. I'm, I'm very, uh, what would be the term for that? I'm not very white scientific. Trash? Oh, no. well, white trash and that too, <laughs> you know, just depending on, depending on how you see me cooking. No, we call that professional because you just look at it like you don't need like meters and all kind of fancy equipment. You just look at it and you're like, oh yeah, that's ready to go. Yeah, I mean, generally, I pretty much eyeball it. Even when I'm cooking the same shit that I've cooked for years, I, I just guess it, guesstimate everything. Is that a thing? Guesstimate? Seems legit. <laughs> I mean, the chicken you cooked for me last week was on point, so whatever you did there. Yeah, I don't get a lot of complaints. Yeah, so I didn't if, get sick. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, no, you didn't get sick <laughs> physically. But I felt like after the podcast, maybe your mental condition might have deteriorated. I was definitely ready for a meat coma. <laughs> and by ready, I mean it took control of me no matter what. So as we're talking about steak cooking methods, you know, obviously grilling a steak is the hallmark method. Everybody knows grilling a steak is the best way to go. I mean, generally, it's the most accessible. It's the quickest. It's the easiest. It's... Talking about on produces propane? Produces really good results. <laughs> I mean, on propane, if you want to just get in it and throw some shit on the grill and you've got it on sale and you're hungry right now, maybe, but get some fucking charcoal and or At least real some wood. briquettes. At least some briquettes, something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, don't spit in Stephen F. Austin's face and fire up a propane grill. <laughs> Go chop down a pecan tree and put it in the fire, man. We talk about Steve Austin or Abe Lincoln. Or <laughs> I mean, I, I said Stephen F. Austin, but you can say Stone Cold. I mean, either way, the Texas Rattlesnake or the Godfather of Texas. Both are Texas icons. Yeah, I mean, both of them seem legit, and I bet you wouldn't talk trash to either one of them. No, you wouldn't. Stephen F. Austin also with the chops, just to let you know. Like in his younger days or now? Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure Stephen F. Austin has not been alive for... Quite a few years. Oh, Stephen F. Austin. <laughs> yeah. I, I, no, I not the Stone F Cold there. Steve Austin. <laughs> yeah, I was say Stone Cold is like bald all the way around. Yeah, you don't just say Steve Austin. You got to say Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, yeah. You got to preface it there. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to just be like. Watch too much Broken Skull Ranch. Yeah. I'm not just going to say the 3 6 Mafia. I'm going to say the Academy Award winning 3 6 Mafia. <laughs> When did that happen? I don't know, but it was in that song. <laughs> I missed that one. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I definitely prefer probably sous vide since I've just discovered it myself. It's my preferred method of cooking a steak. And, and so uh, full disclosure, I tried sous vide today for the first time. Uh, we were kind of prepping for this episode, talking prepping. about all the different things that we could 
discuss on here. And uh, I had never tried sous vide. He's he's been uh, raving about it here for a while, so he brought some over. And I gotta say, it's pretty pretty delicious. Yeah, I mean, you just held yourself back from an f bomb. I did. I and didn't like it. I'm trying to keep your friend <laughs> from, uh, from being too drunk. <laughs> and apparently, I've offended some ears, and I really need to keep my shit under control. Today. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Good job. Good job. <laughs> yeah, so sous vide, if you're not familiar with it, uh, is a French term, and I believe it means in water or with water. Um, so basically, you take your cut, which today I did a pork steak. Uh, from Novax here in Ocampo. Shout out Novax Meat Market. Um, they take a pork butt, I believe, and uh, what you would normally make uh, like a pulled pork with, and uh, they cut it into steaks instead. And then they sell them seasoned or unseasoned. I got I got one that was unseasoned, and uh, yeah, seasoned it up, put it in a uh, vacuum sealed bag, and then threw it in the water bath. There's like a wand that kind of looks like a curling iron. And it heats the water up to your desired temperature. I did this at 140 degrees um, and then for two and a half hours. And so the water never gets above 140, so it never overcooks your meat or whatever you're cooking in there. So it's like foolproof. You can leave it in there for hours and hours and hours, and it's never going to overcook kind of like a crock pot. It is kind of like a crock pot. If you really (laughs) think about it, it's water. It's heating element. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty much crock pot cooking a steak i would say this is like a man's crock pot of some kind so i guess you didn't cook a steak okay but here's where a steak here's where it comes in oh crock potted (laughs) you're just making all kinds of words up today dude yeah so you cook it in this water bath for you know two hours minimum three hours is kind of like where it kind of starts to break the meat down a little bit to where it's not quite steak texture anymore so two and a half is like where i go always so 140 degrees two and a half hours and then you pull it out you dry it off because it's got all the juices inside and they're you know doing what juices do and you dry dry it off off, you like dab it with a towel i pat it dry pat it dry i try not to do the dab (laughs) not with your meat not with my meat and so i pat it dry with a, a towel and then i hit it with some seasoning and then go to the coals, scorched earth style, and hit it for like a couple of minutes. Because uh, USDA's uh, recommended guidelines for pork is 145 degrees. Uh, at least that's what they want us to think. And it's a medium rare. Do not be scared. The meat will be pink inside. Kind of like a, like a good steak should be. Uh, but it's perfectly healthy to eat it. That's how I've been eating them for the past year or so. And I uh, haven't got any uh, brain worms. It was quite delicious, but I'm going to have you know if I get brain worms, I'm sending you the bill. I'm going to put that on the Patreon. You're going to put that on the Patreon? Yeah, help brain- Tony with his brain worms. $23 <laughs> a month. <laughs> oh, man. I'm, I may have gotten brain worms years ago. Like, if, if it's not evidence enough having a conversation with that me, then I may have brain, w- brain worms. But. You know, I don't like even maybe know. that's what it's from. I don't know. That was even a thing. Is that like a Surfside situation? No, there's lots of Surfside situations, but I don't know the brain worms now. <laughs> More likely Dow, Dow Chemical. Hey, real quick, it. shout out Felix out in Surfside. <laughs> is Felix still around? Dude, if, hey, Felix, bro, wherever you're listening to this, whether it's in Brazoria County lockup or at Pier 30, shout out, bro. That guy. Yeah. Anyway. He was just living the dream. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind that's, of jealous. That's a story for another day. We'll put that on the tangent list. <laughs> so, I have to agree with the AJ on the sous vide. It was quite delicious uh, to to really learn that you could crock pot a steak was <laughs> kind of an eye opener for me. You know, it, it the came more out you really know. good. I was very surprised. Um, so you're going to stick to uh, cast iron being your number one. For indoor cooking, I, I mean, if I'm if I'm not going outside in 105 degree heat and I, I'm gonna cook a steak, I don't know how I could supplant cast iron as my number one. Yeah, you know, I gotta stick with what I know. I'm gonna have to have you make me a cast iron steak to change my mind. We'll do that one day, Crowder style, Stephen Crowder style. <laughs> change my mind. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, the. <laughs> This to change my mind guy. Change my mind guy. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I just never have had good experience with the cast iron. Now, some like peach cobbler, yeah, hit me up in a Dutch oven with a campfire 
Boy Scout style. I'll, I'll show you how to how to throw down on the cast iron. There's a whole lot to it. You got to get your pan seasoned. You got to you clean it differently. You don't you don't take soap and water to your cast iron. You know, should we do it right now? Or that's a little bit sacrilegious. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, I know that. I saw a YouTube it. video. Oh yeah, another YouTube video. <laughs> yeah. Man, what do you do besides YouTube? Uh, and um, Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Hey, seriously, whoever created that <laughs> fake Tinder account, please delete it, man. You're ruining, you're ruining my life. <laughs> like that person is listening to the podcast. Oh, my gosh. You know who is listening to this podcast, Siri, because she just talked to me. Oh, my God. Now she's still listening. Oh, my God. They are listening. We are going to have they to edit this are out. Listening. No, we're leaving it in. Thank, <laughs> hey, FBI guy, chill out. Quit trying to listen in on this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, that poor FBI guy that's dropping in on our lives. Bro, when does he sleep? He's, he's got to be disappointed. Like, I covered up my webcam with a Band-Aid. A Band-Aid? Band-Aid. I used one of my daughter's little stickers. She got these little whole pages full of stickers. I just grabbed one of those, popped it on there. Wow. So, to be honest, like, I don't really do anything cool for them to, like, spy in on me. But I kind of feel honored. Like, I have my own, uh, what was that movie back in the day? That was like they followed the guy everywhere, and he didn't know he was on TV the whole time. Oh, uh, Truman Show. The Truman Show, yeah. I'm like my own Truman Show. Yeah, like Jim Carrey. Got yeah, the world can we monetize you? it? I feel like the FBI's live feed of my webcam is somewhere, but I'm not getting paid for it. Kind of upset. Yeah, yeah. I wish wish I could have some monetization from my FBI. I just realized that my my computer that I'm using right now is not covered so oh dude they're, they're watching clearly me. watching me hey but if podcast. we could get that footage for this podcast because we're trying to go to the video yeah but just, we just don't have enough cameras to do it so like if we could somehow get with the fbi and give them like a kickback that would be pretty cool yeah probably i mean i think the viewers would be very disappointed to to see my just my ugly mug all up in their grill, especially to, from that low angle where yeah, it's at right now. I mean, I don't have the protractor angle going right now. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, who do you think we need to email about that? Like Hillary or something? Hillary probably. She probably just delete it. No, I don't want to get Epstein. Dude, Let's don't, don't do get that. Epstein. Do I, not get Epstein. I don't want to get Epstein. Oh so. man, but uh, I'm telling you today. Today has been a good day really has we had tony and i went to lunch today at greek brothers here in el campo because we wanted to try something new that we had never tried specifically to speak about on this podcast well to preface it you know when we were we were doing the the prep work as i'll say again uh for talking about all the different steak cooking methods uh there's a bunch of different ways out there obviously we covered quite a few of them but one one method that we had heard about that just just really kind of came out recently. They added this to the menu like what a month ago, two yeah, months something ago. Like that. Um, he does a deep fried Cajun ribeye. Yes. And when I first heard about it, it was instant sacrilege. Like, there's no way you're putting a ribeye in a oil fryer and serving it to me. There's no way. Yeah. Uh, and now. And now <laughs> after. Uh, going there and checking it out and trying i mean the person that told me about it was brent shout out brent uh he he was raving about it and he's one of the people i if they tell me something's good as far as meat goes i i trust his opinion on that for sure so you know i took it a little more seriously i brought it up to aj when we were doing the discussions and we went in to try it today and holy shit balls dude it blew my mind like I made a cool video, which you probably <coughs> saw, because I think I'm going to use it as the main promo for this podcast, because that's how much of an impact it had on me. I was like, dude, like I was kind of like with Tony, like skeptical, like, why are you going to deep fry just like raw meat without any batter or like, I mean, it's a steak. Like, how is that even a thing? But I mean, they season it with their Opa house seasoning, uh, which you can get at uh, tinroofhome.com. Shameless plug. And uh, then they hit it in the deep fryer, just like you're doing a chicken fried steak or French fries or whatever. Like five minutes in and out of that thing, dude. The crust, like whoa. Yeah, like w- one of the highlights of that cooking method is that you know you get a good marbled piece of steak and the fatty chunks that are around it. The way they crisp up and 
and I don't know a way to explain it other. It's similar to like it's like a beefy chicharrones. Yeah, kinda. it's definitely pork belly feeling. Like just ridiculous. Like the crust is. It's first of all, it pleasing to the eye because it's perfectly even. My OCD was so satisfied. Like the main reason I hate flat top is because like some of the meat gets brown and some of it just gets gray. This was like golden brown, delicious. All the way around, the fat got all crispy and like delicious. And I think just... the key, one of the keys to it, is he uses a really thick cut of steak. Like, oh yeah. I think if it was a thin cut, then it would it would. You cook... probably overcook it. Yeah, you cook overcook it too quick, and it, it just wouldn't have the same effect. But a thick cut ribeye that he did that way, and it it also kind of I was I was surprised that it seared the seasoning onto it when he dropped it. You know, yeah, was, it didn't wash off. It didn't it didn't come off? I was expecting you know the seasoning maybe to not not be as uh prevalent as it was yeah you know another uh another surprise with it was the lemon juice that he poured on it yeah after it was yeah, cooked I, I did not expect that at all at the very end uh, it, uh, you know he, he went and kind of threw the lemon juice over it and i was like what the hell is that i i wasn't expecting it at all but man it accented the flavor a lot i, I definitely definitely get it 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 was really good. Yeah, like it it didn't overpower the steak, but like you could catch that flavor kind of just like as a little bit of an afterthought almost. Like it didn't hit you up front right when you bit into it, but then it just kind of like lingered for a second and then you kind of caught that little it wasn't like like you would think a lemon would taste. Maybe it's with all of the grease and the the seasoning or something it kind of yeah, changed the flavor kinda, of it. Like the citrusy tied it all together kind of. I think they call yeah. it notes notes citrusy notes the citrusy notes. we're gonna need to do some research about real proper words <laughs> yeah like if we're gonna speak on food like the real food people the culinary guys and the chefs that listen to us have got to be like these guys are morons none of those people are listening to us bro <laughs> these are just dudes like us that use words like us so we don't need to get all crazy and fancy i'm not gonna try to pretend like i'm something i'm not i take all of that back i'm not gonna look up any words i'm gonna use words like Whatever words you're making up, sizzling and whatever, guesstimation and Shit. all of that stuff. <laughs> We're going all in. Yeah. So speaking of being crazy and sophisticated, we didn't even try this glorious steak the way it's supposed to be. Like the way he serves it is on rice with crawfish etouffee over the top of it smothered. And I am a big seafood guy. And next time I go in, that's what I'm going to get. But we're just going to call me out now. You know, okay. You know, we had to be a, we had to be a purist today and just try it for the steak because this is a steak episode. This isn't a seafood episode. I also don't care for seafood too much because I did some commercial catfishing back in college over the summer. And if you know how that works, you are in neck deep water with catfish and then you put them all into a net to pull them out and they stab you everywhere. So, once upon a time, you did commercial catfishing, and now today you're getting catfished. <laughs> so I'm not getting catfished. Full circle. I'm the mask you, oh, of the catfish. So yeah, someone yeah. is catfishing other people using my. So your face, face is catfishing people. This is true. Oh, okay, but so. I guess in the person being catfished point of view, it is me because they don't know that it's not the real me. Is that an know. Eminem song? A, what's the term for that? Somebody call that uh, host of that show and ask him. What's what's the term for the person that's the image used in a catfish? They call it the mask. Oh, that's the mask. That's yeah. actually the term. I watch a lot of catfish. <laughs> okay. yeah, I, never, I didn't On watch YouTube. it that much. I'm pretty sure my wife watched a lot of it. but Dude, they have a new show, and it's called Ghosted. Ghosted. Yeah, so it's like similar to catfish style, but instead of like people that are... Like so, they're tracking down bitches and be like, "Hey, you ghosted my my dude here." Yeah, and that's not cool. Like they're they're holding these people accountable that are just ghosting yeah, people. Except that probably that dude was really creepy and did some like <laughs> sketchy stuff to that chick, and now she has to talk to him again man. on television. Oh, that's man, the cringe and awkwardness. I bet that's gonna be a good show, dude. I can't believe they're letting that happen, especially in today's world. Yeah, like yeah, that's not safe space. It's not safe space at all, but. I don't know if it makes good television and it sells. Also, I'm I'm sorry that I just assumed someone's gender. 
I didn't mean <laughs> you to. You assumed two people's gender. I assumed two people's gender, and I want to apologize for that right now. Uh, I don't know what got into me, but I apologize uh, on behalf of myself and on the behalf of this podcast, and I'm sorry that I brought shame to this podcast, the Meets and Beats podcast. Well... I mean, you're you're sitting by your crib safe space like we talked about in the last episode. So, sure. I mean, if you're going to do it, you're I in the moved. right spot. Yeah, I didn't want to move. Like, so I'm leaning on a crib. You're sitting on a bed. And my computer is sitting on a cooler, Man. which we borrowed. Yeah. So I mean, we're just sophisticated. Dude, we're ready for video. We are ready we're for video. We are fully ready for video. Just going all in. So, yeah. As far as steak cooking methods... I don't know that you can really crown a top one, you know, and again, to go back to what I said at the very beginning, it, it really comes down to what you're cooking and what you're in the mood for. And if, if, if you do it right, then do what you like. You know, if the end, like you said in the last podcast, if the end result is good, then it doesn't matter how you got there. I sometimes go there and think, yes, as long as it's good. But then I'm also very judgy. Uh and then I'll go back to don't bring me that. Okay. Some so people are so steak, steak snob. Steak aspiring. Aspiring. Aspiring steak. steak. It's on the website if you'd look at it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> to, it's oh. my description. Speaking of on the website, we, <laughs> we forgot to mention that the deep fried rib, ribeye gets 100% GMO oh, certification. Yeah. That's from us, 100%. By the way. Guaranteed meat overload. Guaranteed meat overload. Go I got to it Greeks. right the first time. Go time. to Greeks. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you said it last time. If you don't know how he said it last time, uh, click the previous podcast and listen <laughs> to it. Um, yeah, so go to Greek Brothers in El Campo. Tell them that AJ and Tony from the Meats and Beats podcast sent you and you want the Cajun fried ribeye. Do it. Do it like thank us. right now. What time is it? Wherever you're at right now, get on a plane, come to Texas. But you're not staying if you don't from here. Go to Greeks, <laughs> get that. Maybe my band was playing there, and uh, yeah, get you a Cajun fried ribeye, and also get steak tidbits on the side because that's my uh, other favorite thing. Uh, their gumbo is pretty solid, man. I like the gumbo there and uh, oysters when they're in season. I mean, oh, it's summertime yeah. right now. Don't buy oysters. You wouldn't know because you don't like seafood. Is that a thing? You yeah. can't get them in the summertime? I mean, you can, but they got to bring them in from the upper Atlantic or somewhere where the water's still cold. Oh. You, know, you can't get Texas oysters in the summer. And then if somebody offers you Texas oysters in the middle of the summer, don't eat them because mm, <laughs> yeah. they don't know what they're doing. That's probably going to be a hard pass for me. I had the lamb chops there for the first time. It was the first time I ever had lamb chops. And, dude, did not taste like sweat at all like they say on TV. You know, <laughs> I've had lamb chops at a couple of places. I've never had them at Greeks. I had them at a at a steakhouse in Vegas once that were really good. Um, the only other time I had them was uh, at that Brazilian steakhouse that we that we hit up that time, dude. And I was very disappointed in that one. I mean, overall the meal was amazing. It was definitely one of the top five meals I've ever had. But the lamb chops in particular, they had like this mint flavoring on them that. I didn't care for. I feel like that's very Mediterranean, though, right? Mint? Maybe. Isn't I don't that know. Their thing? Is that a thing? I, I mean, don't know. I would figure people in the Mediterranean area would know how to cook lamb better than better than us here. I mean, I yeah, we went to a Brazilian steakhouse and had Mediterranean-styled food, so maybe, maybe something got why. lost in translation. Yeah, but everything else was totally great. It was on point. Yeah, like, that place was devastating. <laughs> it was such a devastating yeah. meal. And then we tried to go to the bars afterwards. Well, we went to the bars. And it took about an hour before we could really start drinking. Well, before I could really start drinking. Yeah, I had like four Topo Chicos. Yeah, you were a Topo Chico I wasted. Was topo wasted. Yeah. But uh, the lamb chops at Greeks are solid. And um, it was the first time I had them. And I was like, dude, look, yeah, let me go ahead and try it. And dude. I mean, outside of, outside of steak night, I don't know that I go to Greeks... Maybe as often as I, I would like to. I go there steak nights really is, is where it's at. You go on, what is it, Wednesday? It's Wednesday night, dollar twenty five an ounce steaks, ribeyes. Used to be a dollar. Remember when it was a dollar? Those were the good old days. Yeah, when gasoline was ninety nine cents and that was like a year ago. <laughs> so you could get a you could get a pack of gum for I don't know how much a pack of gum for. And dime bag used to cost a dime. No. A dime no. bag never cost a dime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude! Second best comment that I ever heard from this 
first podcast was uh, if the guy says a we- uh, something about a weed bong, he is 100% a cop. I would probably agree to that. You yeah. know, if you're ever at a festival and a guy comes up and says, hey, man, you got a weed bong? <laughs> you know, there's something wrong. You That's... McConaughey hate that right now. <laughs> I just went full on McConaughey. Be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, so that was that was probably my uh, other most favorite comment. But I am 100 percent not a cop. It's <laughs> no. exactly what a cop would say. <laughs> that is exactly what a cop would say. I mean, you happen to be friends with all the cops. You don't have to be a cop. You just like know the cops. Oh, uh, it's kind of like mafia style, like. <laughs> Did you just Frank Sinatra me? <laughs> I just Frank Sinatra to you. <laughs> Sorry if you're a cop in El Campo. I love you. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't pull be, me over Don't again. be mad just because they got you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it again. Tony's street cred went up. Let's just say that. <laughs> we probably don't need to divulge that on the podcast, but no, let's just say no. his street cred went up. But nothing like a steak. No. See what like I did there? Steak. I oh, pulled it back in. You pulled it back in, and sometimes you got to do it. So One of us has to not be on a tangent all the time, but it's probably neither one of us. Yeah, yeah. We got to be able to, to <laughs> reel need, it back in. And, we need adult supervision. Stay the core, you know. We definitely need adult supervision. Hey, real quick, I want to send another shout out uh, to my buddy Matthew up in Leonard, Texas. And he just started a podcast called The 12 O'Clock Siren. And uh, they talked to local folks there in their town in Leonard. And uh, it's pretty awesome. I listened to their first episode today. And so shout out to him. Oh, shout out to Leonard. I, I don't know anything Leonard, about Texas. Leonard. Leonard, Texas. Population like seven or something. You know, every uh, in, our, in, our, in our business, you know, we, we both work for Tough Country. Shout out Tough Country. Anybody that doesn't know, uh, get yourself a front bumper. Hook it up. That was not a free plug. That was, well. They sign our paychecks. They, yeah. So, I mean, they, <laughs> they technically sponsor everything that we do. But anyway, so being in that business, we deal a lot in Texas. And uh, every other day I hear about a new town in Texas that I did not know existed. Just when I thought I heard every town that you could possibly know, somebody hits me with a random Leonard or Diebol or random town that, I'm learning about today for the first time. Yeah. You know. Celeste. Celeste. Yeah. Melissa. I mean, you could do a full tour of Asia and Europe in Texas. Yes, you can. Palestine, Moscow. <laughs> I didn't Moscow was one? There's a Moscow, Texas. No. Yes. There I know is. there's like a Paris and a London. And yeah, uh, there is just about every damn city in Texas that is also somewhere else. Dude, the ones in West Texas are the craziest name. Oh, yeah. Wink. Yeah. There's a Wink, Texas. Shout out Bubba at Do Little Services if you're listening. He's he, definitely listening. <laughs> so I'm going to send him the link. Hey, he's uh, he, he's definitely a uh, category for Meat Eater of the Month one day. Oh, dang. Know? Are we going straight into that? Was that the segue? I mean, maybe. Meat Eater of the Month. <laughs> I just did a little... That was my little... Uh, Whatever. AJ's Intro good music. at voiceovers and transition tunes. And I thought you were going to say trans something else. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, you do need a safe space, so it's yeah. possible that we could go there one day. Today's Meat Eater of the Month. Meat Eater uh, of the Month. Which I guess is this month's Meat Eater of the Month, I guess. right? Yeah, we're going to do it once a month. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we just committed to it. It's. I mean, it's on tape. It's, yeah. it's permanent. It's, it's going to be on the until internet we say forever. Otherwise. Yeah, until we just bail out on it altogether. But Meat yeah. Eater of the Month is Matt Pittman from Meat Church in Waxahachie, Texas. Number one, it's in Texas. Yep. Number two, the seasoning's great. I guess probably number one, the seasoning's great. Number two, he's from Texas. And uh, yeah, man, I am such a fanboy for Meat Church's stuff. I got a bunch of it, and I paid for it all. This isn't a paid sponsorship. Same as we did with the Cluckalicious from Dos Gringos. Is it Dos Gringos or Two Gringos? Two Gringos. Dos Gringos is a way better name. Yeah, yeah, but Two Gringos is the name. So yeah. <laughs> if you don't look for it, that's what you look yeah, for. Yeah, Two Gringos. Anyway, so Matt Pittman from Me Church. I like all of their seasoning. I think my favorite one, uh, which doesn't get enough credit, it's kind of a sleeper seasoning. It's called Dia de la Fajita, and uh, it's like kind of like the Cluckalicious. It's citrusy and like... A little bit spicier, I think, than the Cluckalicious was. Perfect yeah. for chicken and pork. Fajitas, I that for one. sure. I'll have to check that one out. Uh, yeah. Meat Church is definitely... I've had a couple of them. Uh, I think I have uh, 
What is the pork one? The one we had today was the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel. The Gospel, and then there's, uh, <coughs> dude, so many. There's. I can't uh, remember. I have a green one in my in my cabinet. That's the Dia de la Fajita. Is that what green that one? Green label. It's got the little candy skull on it. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. Him. So I already had that one. Yeah. yeah. But you know, <coughs> when we were talking about meeting of the month, and he brought up Matt Pittman. I was on board because this dude's living the dream. <laughs> totally mean, living the dream. <laughs> totally living the dream. He came up with a line of seasoning. He marketed it properly. He uh, broke down and cashed out. Yeah. And he yeah. just totally. I think the coolest thing that they do, other than make all the seasonings, which is great, but let's be honest here, like most seasoning is just a marketing play. Like, yeah. If yeah, you I mean, make a pretty okay seasoning if you get the right heavy hitters online uh, on board online make some good labels and get it in the right stores like people are going to buy it i mean you're not going to walk up in the store and like taste test all of the seasonings before you buy it you're buying the label 100 percent at the beginning at least at the beginning yeah but i mean to really carry the brand it's got to be good and oh for sure yeah meat church has definitely been been proven yeah but the, the coolest good. thing that he does are these like weekend retreat barbecue seminars up in waxahachie and he's teamed up with like big mo not the rapper the r.i.p <laughs> did he die Big Mo's been dead oh for my a long god time, man. dude my bad sorry r.i.p pour one out uh yeah so he does these uh Big Mo, the pit master, and uh, a bunch of other of these pit masters, they all get together up in Waxahachie and do like a little weekend retreat thing where you can come up and they teach you how to do barbecue. Uh, I almost did one where they teach you how to use the Traeger, but uh, I already know how to use it. So I was like, I'll wait for another I one. I mean, they teach an entire class on how to use a Traeger. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to turn it on. There's a there's a system for turning it on. You don't just turn the power switch on. Oh, you have to put it goodness. on smoke first <laughs> for the fire to start, and then put it on your desired temperature. Oh, is. so there's yeah multiple steps. Method. What do they do the rest of the 27 <laughs> minutes for this 30 minute class? It's not a 30 minute class, dude. It's like a weekend class. They teach you how to do brisket and ribs and chicken and oh okay. So they give you a chart with your times and temperatures, and here's <laughs> yeah, how to then turn you it drink on. Drink beer, and then y'all just party the rest of the weekend. Yeah, dude, that, exactly. That, that sounds like a pretty awesome retreat. Yeah, like how do I sign up for that? Oh, yeah, it's pretty I easy. Am... You just go to their website, meetchurch.com. They got some pretty cool merch, and uh, yeah, Matt Pittman, meat eater of the month, doing work, man, putting in work. He's like, he's like the Dan Bilzerian of spices. The Dan Bilzerian of spices. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Shout out Dan Bilzerian <laughs> yeah. of, spa, of seasoning, I guess. Of Dan seasoning. Bilzerian of seasoning. So he got a, a gang of, of models running around with his meat church. Nah, man, he has a wife. Oh. That's, he's well, he's then, like doing it the right way. Like, oh, wife, so he's wife not up. the Dan Bilzerian of seasoning. I mean, I just mean, I mean he's if living you're just dream. going off Insta fame and living the dream, yeah. Dude, I mean, how long can Dan Bilzerian ride that out? I. Uh, I feel like he's established himself as a quasi celebrity and he's not going away anytime soon. Like what do you work for anymore? Like well he's got some kind of uh what hash oil company or something. No, I mean like what's game. his goal? <laughs> like why why keep working? I don't know. Or keep what uh, whatever he does. I mean, do you call that work? Like he just yeah. hangs out with hot chicks smoking weed all day. And work works out and goes on vacations. Yeah, I don't know. I guess he works to keep his lifestyle alive. Whatever. I mean, I guess. Hats off. Good job, bro. Cocaine's Made a it. hell of a drug, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of which, let's move into our music segment. <laughs> Speaking of, what are we what are we reviewing today? We are reviewing Everlast. Do not check your podcast screens. We are talking about the Everlast from two thousand and four. 2002? 2002 he's been around a lot longer than 99 that, no he's been around since like 91 he was with uh house of pain dude they did jump around jump I mean, around it's like a quintessential 90s song like everybody knows jump around if you want to see a whole bar full of white people get white and yes. lit you hit that first little horn intro thing on that song oh man yeah and then that little siren, especially like all sound the thirty thing. somethings, you know, oh, middle dude. age. There's nothing more entertaining than seeing the most cowboyed up old white guy cowboy get low to like a song like that. 
or like <laughs> some other old school rap song or something. So now when you're on intermu- intermission during your shows, you got to put jump around into your I do. Your we cycle. might just play it. Dude, he does an acoustic version on one of his albums of that song that you could you could do that. Yeah. It works. Dude, I'm I'm telling you like 1 o'clock in the morning, place is coming undone. Jump around. <laughs> Boom. So what we're reviewing is Whitey Ford's House of Pain by Everlast. And he's one of those guys that he's just kind of stuck around for a long time. I mean, he had Put Your Lights On and What It's Like and White Trash Beautiful. He's had, he's had a lot of hits over the past 20, 30 years. He's one of those, like, I don't know that, like, like one of those actors that's in all the damn movies and you don't realize it until one day you're like, oh shit, that motherfucker's in every movie. You know, like He's in every decade with music that has done pretty well, actually. Yeah, man. Uh, I hadn't even thought about Everlast in, pff, dude, I don't know, 15 years or something. Uh, and then I saw him on Rogan's podcast a few times and I didn't realize he was still making music. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, with our musical selection, we want to we want to go kind of broad. We want to cover a lot of different genres and, and, you know, just make sure that we're looking at all the different styles. You know, that's one of the things about musical artistry is people put their heart and soul into that shit. So, you know, we want to cover cover everything, even if it's something it's outside of our normal listening you know yeah i feel like i have a pretty eclectic musical taste like i don't listen to just one kind of music like i don't think anybody does like who wants to just eat one type of food exactly right you yeah. know like don't pigeon yourself pigeonhole yourself into just one type of music that's boring yeah you know? i think uh oh i have a confession to make I'm about to date myself uh i am answering machine years old and whenever I was in high school, I had an answering machine on the phone line in my bedroom, and I played the Everlast song, What It's Like, as my little answering sound. You know, nice. you could like, you know, I don't know, you're younger than me, so you might not know, but you had like the outgoing message. Yeah. So like whenever the tape picked up after the fourth ring that I didn't answer, because I was probably screening the call, because I don't think I had caller ID back then, uh, like I played the little intro thing to that song. And then I like did my hey this is AJ I can't come to the phone right now so leave a message after the man beep. I bet that was the coolest shit in 1998 for you dude that's why everybody's trying to use me to catfish people <laughs> <laughs> yeah no dude <laughs> yeah if anybody would have called me then it would have been awesome but like I didn't have any friends so <laughs> so my first outgoing message was was the one where it was like I tried to answer you oh know, yeah I carried classic it on for like two minutes hello hello. I can't really hear you very well. And then, hey, this is Tony. You got my voicemail. You know, I was that guy back yeah. then when I first got my cell phone in like 2003. Dang, throwback. Yeah, yeah dude. I'm, I always hear those things and I still fall for them. Like even after I've heard it from the same person like two or three times. And then I really hate them and myself. <laughs> it's like the double whammy. Yeah. Dude, this Everlast record, I'm not going to lie, it was hard to get through like the first five or six songs i was like dude honestly these probably all sound like they were the same song i wasn't even sure i had to look to see if it had changed to the next song or not so they kind of all sounded the same it didn't really like pick up until probably the like i don't know seventh or song like that it's a long record right it's like i don't know how many songs songs. 15 songs yeah i mean it was you could tell he's kind of going back to his his rap days and and bouncing between that i think he got kind of in a phase where you know what was popular was his more acoustic you know slower rock type music yeah and you know uh he wanted to get back to what he what his roots were you know and i I see that but you know there were a couple of standouts on the record i thought um you know the it ain't easy song yeah i like that one really good uh smoking and drinking i could see that being a real popular song yeah uh i think he's like his own label so i don't know if that'll get any national play but if it did it would probably do pretty well i mean it's one of those songs that probably appealing to the masses you know yeah i liked it quite i liked that one and then i liked uh summer rain summer rain was really good and don't complain those were the two standouts the reason i liked um i think it was it ain't easy is because it sounded just like the what it's like. It's like literally the same chords. Yeah. He was yeah. like, "Hey, 
Let me just go ahead. Let me get this paper. It definitely throws back to that song. Yeah. Uh, but there's some relevant shit in the lyrics. I thought the lyrics were, were, were pretty pretty well written. What it's like was badass lyrics. I mean, that's why it went out. Yeah. It was such a big hit back it's, then. It's crazy but, because, you. Th- it, I mean, is it relatable? Like, what it's like? I don't think it's... Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. Like, it seems pretty dark. It is, but it, like, went off, like, hardcore. Yeah, and I mean, uh, there's definitely some people that relate to that song. Yeah, I, I mean, think Felix had oh, <laughs> related yeah. to that song. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm positive. Did, uh, so let's just go ahead and go there. The Culling. Oh, track yeah. two. Yes, he went in. He all went on. all in. Like him and Rogan and Eddie Bravo got super lit on a lot of blunts and they wrote that song <laughs> full paranoia full paranoia, full paranoia conspiracy like, theory i mean he covers all of them I mean, yeah he hits all everyone yeah it's like the full circle on all the conspiracy theories yeah like did we really land on the moon did we <laughs> here's where i'm at <laughs> yeah so it was very interesting and apparently hang on let me just go ahead and go here so apparently we did land on the moon, allegedly, but some of the photographs were for sure doctored because um, what I uh, come to understand, and I'm not trying to go all in on the uh, moon landing, didn't happen, but uh, apparently what happened is that they didn't, they couldn't quite get enough photographs or maybe they didn't think that people would believe it or whatever, so they staged some photographs uh, and use them as if they were actually real when they were not. They were actually taken during training. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Like Has that been proven? Yeah, there's one of this guy named uh, Wilson, I believe. <laughs> not the uh, not the Spalding uh, volleyball on the movie. Uh, but this guy, <laughs> nobody's going to laugh at that one? Okay, no, cool. I, I didn't. I yeah. didn't no, it's fine. It's cool. There. No, it's fine. I'll, I'll just leave. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this guy was doing a, they took like a photograph of him all wired up doing this like simulated or training um, spacewalk. And like then a few years later, they took that same picture and blacked out the background and used it and said that that was during an actual spacewalk. Really? Yeah. I mean, there's there's some obvious questions when you see the pictures of the moon, uh, like you know, I can't even get a decent shot of, like, my breakfast. And <laughs> they're taking an HD photograph in the 1960s well, let in me, space. Well, let me tell you about that. So, <laughs> so I have a camera that is the same model as the camera taken into space. And it's made by a company called Hasselblad in Switzerland. And those pictures actually would look clearer than a digital camera today because the film negative is so big that it would take approximately like an 800 megapixel camera to hit the same quality as that frame of film. So really, yeah, that that part is legit. Like the pictures are, would be crystal clear from those old cameras. They took 15 of them up to the moon allegedly. Oh, if there was enough uh, lighting to get it, I guess you know. I mean, the sun, learn something I guess. every day. I don't know. I know you're. Uh... I watched a pretty long video about the photographs from there because they used all those cameras. They're so heavy, pretty big. Uh, they couldn't bring them all back with all the moon rocks and everything that they brought back. So they just left them there. So if you want a free one, it's, it's on, on the moon. The moon. <laughs> just go get it. That's yeah, Elon Musk. If you're listening, dude, get, shout out get, Elon. <laughs> yeah, get get a camera <laughs> off the moon. Yeah, I'll that take should be one. a damn uh, one of those government prize things that they award like first company to retrieve this camera would be the one that we're going to award a billion dollar contract to or something that would be legit i mean i don't know elon's pretty much done everything you're going to do when it comes to that he put a damn tesla roadster into orbit or on the way to mars i don't is it in orbit or on mars i don't know yeah he he, there's a car in space (laughs) playing uh playing david bowie no yeah you didn't see this dude like, did you miss that for real i saw the uh the spacex launch where they launched it and then it landed back right over the falcon yeah the dual rockets that simultaneously landed and synchro- synchronized dude well after that he put 
when he, I think it was the Falcon X Heavy. It was part of the promo. He launched a Tesla Roadster into space, Dude. and it had a dummy in a space astronaut costume playing David Bowie on film, like or it was on live stream for a while. It might even still be out there, but that's the most <laughs> ultimate flex ever. It is. It, re- <laughs> it really is. Like I just put a car into space. Yeah. Like, what are y'all doing? Come at me, bro. But you know, so we Captain Tangent again. Dude, Dude, how Tangent. does this happen? Every time. Every a cat walked in, and I kind of lost my marbles for a second, and then yeah. next thing I know, we're in outer space. Yeah. And just real quick, I didn't mention this was on my mind a second you gonna ago. You're going to recap but something. No, no, I haven't recapped it one time yet. But people if, can rewind if they yes. want to recap. Yeah, I, for, I forget about that. We're not listening. We're not live. <laughs> We're not live from Tony's upstairs bedroom sitting by the crib. Uh, if anybody were to doubt the moon landing, they actually put mirrors up there where they landed. And you yeah, can, I saw you that can episode. Fire of Big a laser Bang and get the laser to bounce back and register the distance and calculate that it took that amount of that amount of time for it to go there and back. Who owns these lasers? The government? No, you can use a damn finger pointer laser if you no. have it adjusted to the right spot. Yeah, you have to be very precise, obviously, to the coordinates of where the mirrors are. But is there a YouTube video for this? I'm sure there is. Hey, Jamie, pull that up. Jamie, pull that up. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, okay, Everlast. Ever, yes. What's it called? Uh, Whitey Ford's House of Pain. Whitey Ford's House of Pain. I'm going to give it like, I don't know, man. I'm going to go two out of five stars. Two out of five? I don't know if that's a thing that we're doing. But I mean, if I were to, like the Moon Pies record, five out of five. Well, you know, it, it just depends. Uh, the standout songs to me were like great. But... They're, you know, the the songs where he was going back to his old style. Yeah, I, I get it. I could see that. You know, I, there are a couple on there that I, I, I really liked a lot. We can put the links to those in the comments. I think yeah. we, we mentioned them. But, you know, we got... <clears throat> Got a lot of records we're going to review, and yeah. I think putting a putting a, a star rating wouldn't be so bad. I mean, I would probably lean to a three or four out of five, but I well, you got to go three or four. I mean, this is if it's going to be happening, you got to do it. Let's go three out of five. I'll give it. I'll give it one extra star. Are we doing halves? We're doing halves. I don't <laughs> we know that we're no. We're not getting into okay. Halves, let's go. That makes full. It, if we're going to do halves, let's just fucking make it ten stars. No. <laughs> 300 stars <laughs> no i i think it's a solid i mean i don't know would i listen to it again probably not yeah i think like there, those couple songs that were kind of cool yeah i guess they were kind of cool but it's just maybe it's just not for me yeah i'm not really I mean, into white boy rap too much yeah yeah i mean i added those couple to one of my playlists that i have but you know it's one of those that definitely probably not for everybody just like you know there's a lot of people that are in their own lane on music so yeah you just gave me look. you just gave me a great idea we're gonna start the official meets and beats podcast playlist on spotify boom yeah it's gonna be the wackiest weirdest playlist yeah i mean because that's what we do we listen to stupid stuff and if you have a suggestion for something that you want us to review uh leave it in the comments i guess yeah i've reached out to a few of my other musician friends and told them hey you got something something you're digging something you want us to check out let me know yeah no no holds barred like we'll listen to i mean i like dude i listen to like ravi shankar if i want to get like sitar and like spaced out yeah i listen to country music i listen to like heavy metal i listen to gregorian chant i feel like music (coughs) is like Music is dependent on your mute, your on your mood. Like it, if you want to be sad, you put on some sad stuff. If you want to turn it up, you put on some rocking stuff. I like, agree. I mean, I don't think is... you should, like you said, pigeonhole yourself into like one genre of music that you listen to. I agree. I mean, I, I'm kind of the same way. I, I, the way I explain it, if somebody asks what kind of music I like, I say that. I like music that I can tell somebody put their heart and soul into producing, you know? Yeah. Um, somebody somebody that just picks up a song that they bought from a writer and they come in and record it one day and leave and then it's sent to three other producers and it's just mainstream pop music, I'm probably not going to like that. Yeah. You, you know? want to know what song is not 
emotional and from the heart. Whatever that cowboy song you sent me the other day was. Oh, my God, is the worst song that I've ever heard in my life. And this is coming from a guy that oh loves God. Old Town Road. I love Old Town Road. I play it all the time. I am unashamed of my love for the Old Town Road. All I, of the remixes, you know, giddy on up or giddy out my way, bro. Yeah. I do not love Old Town Road. I have What was that song that you sent me? It so was everybody the can cowboy know not to li- boogie, don't listen to it. I think was the Cowboy like, Boogie. Cowboy everybody boogie. knows. They, everybody already knows what we're talking about cuz They probably do because when I sent this to the few people like asking them what the fuck this is, they were like, <laughs> "Oh, you haven't heard this?" And I'm like, "Man, I'm glad my eardrums haven't been raped for the last three months <laughs> since this song has been out. Has it been out for three months? It came out in June. Did it? Oh, it so it came out after Old Time Road. Yeah, okay. apparently it was road. like riding the Old Town Road coattails, I'm yeah, guessing. Dude. I mean, uh, it was just awful. Oh, I man. mean, just flat out awful. It was called The the Get Up. Oh, The Get Up. Yeah. Is that Worst it song is? ever. The Get Up. Yeah. Blanco Brown. Oh, it's so awful. I mean, it, it, I think it was on 104 or something, one of the Houston radio stations. And yeah, we were on our way from Red Box or something, Walgreens. I don't know. I heard it in the background, and I'm like, I had to turn it up just to hear, to, to make like sure. Like watching a train wreck. <laughs> yes. I had to make sure that what I was hearing was what I was hearing because it was just that awful. Yeah, dude. Like, I mean, I get it. If you're trying to just like make some money and do a cash grab, but uh, I don't know what it's just not for me. Yeah, me neither. Um, I mean, just to do a retraction, uh, Miley Cyrus is not adopted. Oh yes, I definitely uh, <laughs> shit the bed on that one. Um, it's her siblings, I think, that no. were adopted. No, there was. There's at least one adopted sibling. Oh, so uh, also to clarify. Um, I said that Billy Ray Cyrus was a one-hit wonder twice. In fact, he has more than one or two hits. He has quite a few uh, that I forgot he had done because I saw a uh, big interview with Dan Rather with him oh, yeah. the other day. Like the day after we recorded the podcast, I watched it and like he had <laughs> quite like the first one that he had was "All Gave Some." Uh, some gave all. Song. It's a song about it, it's like. Um, it's so a military like that, that song. That song could be. Oh, never mind. I'm not gonna say my. You're gonna comment. say Toby Keith. <laughs> it could it's be a like Toby Keith it's song. like a Toby Keith song except genuine. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> and just good. a preview. One one day at some point in the future, we're gonna do an entire episode called "Fuck Toby Keith." <laughs> Dude, you know who we need to get for that? Stony Gable. Yes, yes, he would be the perfect guest for a "Fuck Toby Keith" episode. <laughs> in fact, he has a song he titled a song. something very similar to that. Yes. That is a great song. Is that going to be part of the Tractor Rap is Ruining America, or is that going to be its own? I don't know. I don't know if we should do it as as its own episode. I mean, there's definitely enough to discuss for it to be its own episode. Yeah. I mean, anyway, Billy Ray Cyrus has several hits, and he's put out 15 records, 15 full-length albums. I thought he only had two songs. I mean, Crazy. to put out 15 records and only have a couple of hits, is that, that does say something in itself. Well, um, okay, let me come at you from another side. If you put out 15 records and you only have a couple of hits, is it because all of those songs were actually good and didn't make it to the radio because the radio only wants manufactured success? Good, good point. I don't want to blow but anyone's in, mind. But in today's viral environment? I think good songs are coming through more more often than not. But then I hear the get up and I remind myself that I'm totally wrong. Yeah. And that the record companies are still pulling the strings. Dude, it's crazy. That's why I'm saying independent. It's not because nobody wants me, for sure. It's just because <laughs> I want to maintain all my creative control. <laughs> yes. Oh, well. I mean, if you're going to be an artist, that's definitely something to weigh in there. Like Sturgill full on did it yeah he went he took independent and ran with it and now he's just throwing a major middle finger to everybody literally everyone even his own fans Uh, speaking of throwing a middle finger to everybody okay uh that was the segue of the the new tool album dropped today too i didn't Um, listen to it yet i haven't listened to it yet either and that's going to be another episode where we're going to Gonna gonna review that album. I yeah. mean, we're gonna keep our musical taste pretty broad. Um, but yeah, from you know, a couple of friends of mine texted me about it, and one of them's comment 
uh, was, yeah, he just threw a fuck you out to everybody with this yes. record. <laughs> so I love it. I'm pretty interested to hear. I mean, everybody waited, what, I don't know, 12 years something or something. Like I don't, it's been a while since the last record. So it'll yeah. be interesting to review that one. It's crazy, man. I think that's good for today because uh, we rambled for a long time. Did we? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think we covered it all. Everlast. Yeah. Yeah. Everlast, steak cooking methods, uh, meteor of the week. We we overlooked the Italian dressing oil field style. Dude, yes. Okay, we're going back. Cooking methods. Hey, real quick, we're going to recap. Okay, some people, and I tried to start talking about it, and then I lost myself. Some people like this, some people don't. Some people hate it. And I don't know if it's like a Texas thing or if it's like an oil field thing. I learned it from my dad who's been in the oil field his whole life. Um, and I know some other people that are into it, and they're also oil field family stuff. But taking a steak, usually like not a not a prime or anything like that, you know, just like a regular select, you know, cheapo steak, and hit it with some uh, Worcester and Worcestershire and Italian dressing, and soaking it in there for like a couple hours or an hour or whatever, dude. I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I have a hankering for it. Well. You know, the only time I use Italian dressing for a seasoning on any kind of meat is when I'm doing baked chicken. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, I do it in the oven with baked chicken. But on a steak, I don't know. I feel like the, the flavor would impact the meat too much for me. But, yeah, I can see that for uh, sure. The know, key is the ratio. Yeah. I mean, I can see if you let it soak a little while, it would make it more tender. So if you had a shitty cut of meat, you know, yeah. I can see where it would, would be appealing. Yeah, the Worcester sauce really breaks the meat down. And uh, you know who does it with the most proficiency ever? The Praca family. Shout out Praca family. Every steak that you've ever had in Lane City is cooked like that. With Worcestershire and Italian dressing? Yeah, 100%. I've never seen them put Italian dressing on steak you, out there. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess I missed You're that part. You were probably drinking whiskey. Now, I know whiskey. they use olive oil, which no. I'm totally a fan of. I use olive oil myself, oh, olive yeah. oil and butter in Worcestershire. But yeah. Yeah, I hadn't seen them do the Italian dressing. Yeah, dude. So you, the, they cook I, a mean steak. I think their secret is, and I've kind of figured it out from watching. And they're so you know they only used uh, they only use like legit wood, real like real wood, oh, pecan, real wood, yeah, yeah so hardwood. And then they start the fire like three hours, hours, hours before it's yeah. time to cook, and it's a huge fire. Usually with like a cup of diesel yeah. to start yeah. the thing up. It's like a four foot tall fire and they <laughs> yeah. wait until it dwindles down. And it's nothing but a bed of like the most beautiful hot coals. Yeah. yeah. So whenever they start job. the fire, that's when they soak the meat. Ah. So they the the meat is at room temperature for sure. And it's been sitting and getting broken down uh, for like three hours at least with the seasoning on there. That was something else that I wanted to talk about. You season the meat way prior or right before? Depends on how how long ago I decided that I'm going to eat a steak for dinner. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> I mean, it really does. If I if I decided a couple of days ago and I got them in the freezer and I take them out and I'm doing things like a diligent human being, you know, <laughs> I prep early. But there's times I get off work and I forgot to get out something for dinner and I run by H-E-B and I pick up a steak and I season it and I throw that bitch on the grill. Yeah. I usually am by the book of seasoning it right before just because everybody's like oh the salt's gonna pull out the moisture and i saw some youtube videos where they like weighed the steaks out and everything and there wasn't very much difference like i doubt it was a like discernible difference in the steak like from how soon how soon you seasoned it you know but i mean whatever they're doing is the right way because yeah that's delicious yeah, I've 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 learned a lot of meat cooking techniques by by hanging out with the Proca family in yeah. Lane City. So yeah. definitely uh, has contributed to where I'm at today as far as grilling goes. And yeah, we barbecue. need to get Mark on a podcast. Oh man, that would be epic. It would be the most probably. I don't know if prolific. he could sit still long enough to. Yeah, he would want to like fix something that was in here, like work <laughs> yeah. on something. Yes, like <laughs> yeah. Man. Anyway, we appreciate you guys listening in. You know, we're having fun doing this. We're going to keep coming at you every week and drop a new episode every Wednesday. So, yeah, make sure you hit our Patreon and uh, you get uh, early access to uh, all of our content. And uh, there's a bunch of other uh, cool little things that you can get on the different levels of Patreon. Visit our website, meetsandbeatspodcast.com. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Not on Tinder, because that's not me. 
Yep, and we'll <laughs> see you uh, see you next week. Go get you a Popeyes or Chick Fil A chicken sandwich oh, to dude prep yourself. For they ran next out week. at Popeyes. How do you run out of chicken? You're a chicken restaurant. They didn't run out of chicken. They it's ran fake. out of the buns. They ran out of the buns. That's even easier to make. Yeah, but you they're just a chicken the... place. They don't have buns, dude. Normally. Do you know how many buns they got stocked in the warehouse that they buy from? Uh, all of them. Uh, it's just a marketing ploy. All, this whole it's, thing it's is a marketing, marketing ploy. Yeah, they did a good job. We need to hire that marketing anyway, firm. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to hire the marketing firm for those people, and we'll be on that, and we'll catch back up with you next week.